I am Minister George Rohemi from Faith Harvest International Churches, Juja. One of the daughter churches of the ministry. We have our mother church at Loisambu. We have sister churches at Moirigo and Utawara. If you are around any of those areas, Juja, Utawara, Moirigo, Roisabu, please uh, visit with us and we will be glad to have you even as you become a blessing to us. We are going to share today an expose from the book of Isaiah chapter 36. Is chapter 3, sorry. Isaiah is a prophet who lived to 800 years before Christ to be placed as 742 BC. And Isaiah 3 verse 10 to 11 says, Say to the last years, it shall be well with them. For they shall eat the fruit of of the year doings. Woe to the weekend, it shall be ill with them, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. My dear viewer, situations come in nations where we have the wicked excelling in life while those who are committed in the service of God are oppressed. This is the situation that was in Zion. The luxurious people, people who are living luxuriously, seem to excel and really to prosper in all their wicked ways. And through their, their means of exer exerting, they would oppress the masses. They would oppress the weak people. They would oppress the community in the days. And it happens that the trend often gets repeated once again in nations. And Isaiah spoke to people who are living in a luxury. Not that living in luxury was evil, but because they were living in luxury at the expense of the general public. And Isaiah, as we have seen in, from verse 1, Isaiah warned them that those who are evil should stop being evil for God is faithful to forgive. And when the Lord forgives, he restores. Therefore, God's grace is sufficient to restore all of us to his loving kindness. They are oppressed and those ones are blessing because he loves us equally. And that is why he allows the rains among the, in areas where we have evil people and even where we have luscious people. And his grace is always there so that the weekend may repent and come back to his saving grace. And the same call is here today. A God is calling all of us that we may repent and go back to him for his saving grace. The prevenient grace of God still is available to all who are not, have not known him personally. And his grace is there to sustain those who are in him and calling upon him 
due to the oppression that they are facing due to the systems of this world. And God looks at those ones oppressing the weak ones. And he says, you know my thoughts are not your thoughts. Isaiah 55 and verse 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heaven are higher than earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And thoughts than your thoughts. God is calling upon those ones who are living in ways that are not pleasing to him. That they may depart from their wicked ways. That they may come back to him for his saving grace. Because the Lord is aware of the deceitfulness of our hearts. Jeremiah 17 and verse 9 states, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I remember in the past there was a song that used to, to say that Amila is deceitful. It deceives the grandmother that she is still young. The same is our hearts. Sometimes our hearts deceives us. Deceives us. That we have time to know our Lord Jesus Christ and to come back to his saving grace. Our hearts deceive us. That we have all the reasons not to Go for his saving grace as soon as now. But our Lord calls upon us that we may lack on that there is no time that we may go for his saving grace. Let's go back to the nation of Israel. Those who are living in luxury in those days and oppressing the poor God condemned their conduct through his servant Isaiah because the way God looks at us is very different from the way the world looks at things and this is revealed in the book of liberation because for them they thought this is the number way to live this is the right way to live this is the way to keep class but God looks at it and call it folly liberation 3 and verse 17 says because you say I am rich have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, bride, and naked. The means in the worldly standards, one may look as if they are doing all right. But when God looks at us, he sees poor, wretched, and bride. And this is why Isaiah in verse 10 and 11 says, Tell the luscious that it shall be well with them. And to the wicked, woe unto them, for the Lord's reward is with him. That means the Lord is warning us that we should live light live as the Lord desires of us that we may get his reward of blessings if we live light and the day of reckoning may not be very far my dear viewer it may be sooner than when we first believed it may be sooner 
than the time we ever thought it would come. It is time to abandon our wicked ways and learn to God. But a time comes when the graces of God comes to a cease. And then it will be a time of judgment. And God proclaims in the book of Revelation 22 and verse 11. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is luscious, let him be luscious still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. That means when time is over, God caused the luscious to continue being luscious and unto the wicked to continue being more wicked. And this is where the, the Swahili people say, Ukitaka kula guluwe kula ile nono. If you want to be wicked, be wicked and excel in it. And if you choose lusciousness, choose lusciousness because God is coming with the reward. But my emphasis this day is to the lusciousness. Tell the lusciousness it will be good for them. Encourage the lusciousness that they don't have to depart from following the Lord because they are fretting those who excel by being evil. Those who are lusciousness hold on to the Lord because the Lord is coming and soon coming and the reward is in his hands. But often, human nature makes us lose heart, makes us feel as if we'll faint on the way. As we flat and as we see the wicked excelling in their evil ways, and the Lord still retains his patience upon them. But that grace is given so that they may repent. And a time came in the book of Marakai that such a season was, came, became evident. And people complained. Allow us to read again in the book of Marakai. Your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken against you? You have said it. It's, it is useless to serve God. What profit is, is it that we have kept his ordinance? And that we have walked as mourners. Before the Lord of the host. So now we call the proud blessed. For those who do wickedness are raised up. They even tempt, the go tempt God and go free. Then those who fear the Lord spoke to one another. And the, li the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him. For those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name, they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On the day that I make them my jewels, and I will spare them as the man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between one who serves God and one who's, who does not serve him. The Lord is calling upon the righteous. 
It is no time to complain. It is no time to fret the evil people. But it's time to desire to live lusciously. To amend our ways and walk closer to God. Because God is washing us. And God is not only washing us. But God is washing us and he writes every good deed that we do in the book of remembrance. In the book of Chronicles. If you are doing good, don't give up. Hold on unto doing good. Hold on and continue doing good. Even if it doesn't seem to yield any fruits. Do not faint in doing good. Because the Lord is coming to repay us for our good deeds. His time is at hand. It is no time to complain and see as if the Lord does not see the good deeds. For the Lord is coming and the reward is at hand. Those people who lived in the days of Marakai had come to a point of even complaining, God, we have been faithful to the calling. We have done what is right. But what we have seen is that we have, seen any, we have not seen any fruits to our good doings. For the wicked seems to excel. And not only excel, but even excel in their evil ways. Because the systems of the world permits them to do it. And God heard from heaven. And told them, a time has come. That I, the Lord, we will make a distinction between those who live lusciously and those who live wickedly. A time has come for me to put a distinction for those who serve me and those who don't serve me. Therefore, faint not. Encourage your feeble knees and your feeble elbows that you continue doing right for God is coming with his reward and his reward is in his hand. Let's look back into the days of Esther. Esther 6 verse 1 and 2, 3. That night the king could not sleep. So one was commanded to bring the book of records of Colonicus. And they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told Big Thama and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs, the doorkeepers who had thought to, to lay hands on King ah Ahuselas. Then the king said, What honor or dignity has been bestowed on Mordecai to this day? My dear viewer, you may be there and you may feel forgotten. And as you continue doing right, even the evil men as they excel in doing their evil acts, they are almost even coming for your life. And this was the situation with Mordecai. But God in his wisdom saw it from heaven. And he had a sleepless night. And he said bring the books of Chronicles. And the Lord saw someone who saved him. That was Mordecai. A man who used to, leave, to, to guard the gates of the king. And he asked. What good was done to this man who saved me? 
And it was found that nothing was done to Mordecai. You may have done a lot of good, my dear friend. You may have remained luscious, holy, a true worshiper before God. But all you receive is being jeered by those who do evil as they excel and you are almost fainting. But the Lord will open the book of remembrance. And when the Lord will open the book of remembrance, maybe that is the time that the evil will have been scheming to excel or to, to, to scheme the yellow scheme to finish you. But the Lord comes and makes judgment just as he did on Mordecai and Haman. That God laced Mordecai and said, that the, that the pit that was dug to put Mordecai in and the post that was supposed to hang Mordecai, that the schema be hung on the post and be thrown into the pit that he was to put Mordecai. My dear viewer, live light. Live to serve the Lord. Live a holy life. For the Lord declares this day that it shall be well with the luscious. The wicked may seem to have excelled for years, but their time is up as your time for restoration is here with us. Therefore be strong. Encourage yourself in the Lord. And continue doing the good that you continue doing. For the Lord is coming. And he's coming with the reward in his hands. That he may lift you up again. Even to the shame of the wicked. My dear viewer. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know the frustrations and the disappointments. I don't know how many people are looking down at you. At the expense of maybe the wicked. Maybe the looters of the nation's economy. Maybe at other people who are against you. But continue doing right. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Hebrews 6 and verse 10 and 12 as I conclude. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. That you do not become, become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. My dear viewer, don't become sluggish. Don't faint. Don't give up. Don't throw the tower. Because the Lord is coming. And he'll make everything beautiful in its time. You may be there. And you're washing us. And you are very sure that the life that you lead the Lord would not count you among those who live light. I would like to request that you pray this prayer after me. That your fellowship with God 
may be less thought. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I repent of all my sins that my name may be erased from the book of death and that it may be written in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. My dear viewer, you may be there feeling discouraged that despite your faithfulness in serving the Lord and feeling light and living light, you have not seen the benefits of your service. And you're almost complaining before God. Let's pray this prayer together. God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the dear viewer who may be feeling frustrated, disappointed, for living light and not seeing the benefits of the year service. Dear God, we thank you for your grace because you are patient with the wicked that they may come back to their knowledge and that they may come to your saving grace. And this is why, dear Lord, you also allow us to go through the situations that we go through so that you may save the wicked even as you restore us. I pray for the viewer who is going through frustrations. Lord, I pray that you may lift ashes from their head and release the crown of praise upon their hands. That you may remove the garment of mourning and you restore a garment of praise upon them. Dear Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your doing a new thing in the life of the dear viewer. That you may restore them. That you may lift them. That you may give them hope. That you may restore us. That we may see your goodness and your saving grace. Stretch your powerful, mighty, righteous right hand, O oh God. And perform a miracle upon the life of the viewer this day. Lord, we thank you. And we magnify your name for your doings this day. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe in. Amen and amen. Shalom.